goodness gracious, we're back, we're live, Global Connections. Why do I say Global Connections? It's because we're going to talk about Global Connections today. Okay, and uh, Elise Anderson just came back from a trip where she crossed uh, a lot of continents. And we want to talk about that. Welcome back, and you made it, you made it back. <laughs> I'm nothing on tour would happen. Well, that's uh, <laughs> nothing that will be discussed on the set on okay, tour. Happen. All right, okay. <laughs> so tell us about your trip. Where did you go and why did you go? Well, I went to many places. I started in Hawaii, had two layovers in, on the mainland, which were actually unfortunately kind of eventful. Um, I stopped for the first time in Edinburgh, Scotland for about a week. So I started in Edinburgh, went to Copenhagen, then all over the place in Sweden then um, stopped in Elsinore, also in Denmark, and then back from Sweden through France, Switzerland, uh, a week in Portugal, a week on an African safari in Tanzania, then briefly in Qatar, Doha, and Paris, and back here now. Hmm. And L.A., I forget, can't forget L.A. Okay, uh, Elsinore. Was Elsinore in Hamlet? Yeah, exactly. That's oh the my castle in Hamlet. Gracious, yeah. I remember it. <laughs> yeah, good job, good what job. What role did Elsinore play in Hamlet? Every role. It was the set. It was where Hamlet lived. It was where he was supposed to rule over. And uh, yeah, okay, this is going to be there. this is going to be on the final exam. You know, <laughs> write it down. How do you spell Elsinore? Well, that's interesting because it's called Elsinore in Hamlet, but actually it's called Helsingborg on the map. So <laughs> you could fool me. <laughs> okay, why did you go on this trip? Um. Was, is it, I think I'm wrong. I think Helsingborg is in Sweden. Helsing, Helsingor. You're talking Denmark now. Yeah, but, but it's spelled with an H on the map. It's spelled with an E in Hamlet. I don't okay. want to be wrong. Okay, okay, yeah, okay. Helsingborg okay. is Sweden. <laughs> I write it down correctly. <laughs> okay, why? Uh, well, I've been traveling a lot for the last four years or so. So I've been going for about three or four months on average. This is actually a relatively short trip for me. And this is the first one I'm willing to actually call a trip. And I think that's important um, because I'm, I'm starting law school in about a month um, in Washington, D.C. And so for the next three plus years, I won't be able to travel at will. And this was really my last hurrah. Um, and it was a lot shorter than usual. It was about a month and a half instead of three plus months. So. You went to a lot of places. So that counts as the grand, <laughs> the grand tour before law school. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> so it was, it was a trip. I have, I've been resistant to call any of my other trips trips. Well, they're not trips. They were journeys. And um, I saw them as building towards life. And, and they were my life. I mean, I, I worked. I got jobs in places. I got certifications, degrees. Um, got to know people who I'll keep in touch with forever, hopefully. And, um, but this was different. This was a trip. Because there was a, I was coming back to something. I don't think you can call something a trip if you're just going and you're not right. tripping away from anything else. You didn't so. go on a tour. There's no, no tour of people going together kind of thing. Well, the safari was a tour. So I was there with my stepmother and father and okay, stepbrothers. Okay. All yeah. right. Okay. So um, um, why this itinerary? How did you, and I really need to know, why you selected this itinerary going <laughs> hither and yon? Kind of all over the place. Well, I was filling up gaps, and I probably should have um, brought my phone, because I have a, a map on Google Maps, and it has yellow dots in all the cities that I've been to. Um, right now, I have 60 yellow dots in Europe. So I've been to 60 <laughs> different cities in Europe. I'm quite proud of that. And there were certain gaps. You know, Scandinavia was a big gap. Sort of the mid-south of France was yeah. a big gap. Uh, the, cent the center of Germany was a big gap. Um, I'd never been to Scotland before. It started out, I picked the places originally because um, I'm, I'm European by ancestry. I'm, 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 <laughs> someone would punch me in the face for saying that, but I consider myself Hawaiian and American. And, but, but before America, two, three hundred years ago, my ancestors were in Europe. So there were about eight different European countries. Mm -hmm. And um, real chop suey, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I, I wanted to see some of them. I'd seen about half of them so far. There's one that I haven't yet seen, and that's the Netherlands. But um, part Scottish, part Danish, part Swedish. Had never been to any of those countries, so I wanted to check them so, off the map. It's a gap trip. Yeah, kind of. Find out where you haven't been and go there. In part, and I after going to Edinburgh and Scandinavia, I and visiting some friends in Switzerland and going to France. Um, I had an uh, option to go to the Netherlands, but I think there's a balance to strike between going places you haven't been and a new place versus going to a place that you love. 
And I love Lisbon. That's my favorite city in the world, probably. Well, Honolulu is my favorite city in the world, but Lisbon, number two. Oh, we need and to talk about Lisbon, yeah. <laughs> it was not on this trip, though. It was. It was. I spent you went a week there. Oh, okay, yeah, that was okay. my last stop. And I went yeah. to Lisbon because even though I'd already been there, I liked it, and I knew I'd like it, and I, um, I mean, it's just, it just has a pulse. The word about Lisbon is authenticity. Okay, let's skip and, around for a minute, okay. and I'll ask you what comes to mind in my, you know, curiosity. We can always just glaze over my pictures in the last five minutes, too. Well, look at them. <laughs> but, um, you know, in, in, in the U.K., in the U.K., uh, they got Brexit, and they got a certain amount of divisiveness going on, as we do, mm -hmm. um, and they got, uh, you know, racial issues there. Uh, what did you see and feel, or was it all, you know, in another neighborhood? I didn't feel much in Edinburgh as far as divisiveness. There was one issue that I didn't appreciate, and that was a street performer who was American, but he kept trashing America throughout his performance. He's a really vulgar guy. He was red-haired. He looked like he was Scottish, actually, but um, he was just a very vulgar man, and he had pulled together about 150 tourists to watch his performance, which actually didn't really end in much. I think we were all standing there thinking, what's going to happen? He got on a chair, jumped off, he tied himself up in chains, and then got out of the chains, and then he started insulting America, as if that was amusing. And I wasn't the only American who was offended by it. This other fellow, who was maybe about my age, started walking away, and the performer had said, you know, whatever you do, just don't walk away. And he was trying to beg for money, too. But And then the the friend of the guy who walked away chased after him, and he said, well, brother, you know, you, you walked, did the one thing he said you weren't supposed to. And he's like, well, you l listen to what he said about America. And I reached out to this complete stranger and said, yeah, I agree with you. I don't believe that Americans in this day and age need to trash America. There are plenty of other people to do that. We don't need to contribute. <laughs> well, so. how did you feel the, the British uh, folk of us in general? I mean, I, they like our, us, our, I think. Our, uh, just last week, we, you know, we took a hit. A couple of days ago, we took a hit in our relations with, uh, with Britain um, because of tweets and cables and the like. Um, I wonder if you, if you felt um, any decline in, in the uh, you know, historic uh, closeness, the close ties between the UK and the US. I mean, I was only in one city, one city in the UK, Edinburgh, and it's a fairly touristy city. So I definitely didn't feel any kind of decline. They I was like last Americans. in. I think so. I was last in the UK. I was in London in 2009, and I, I didn't feel any kind of a declining attitude towards the US. In fact, um, I was on a wonderful, wonderful tour of Edinburgh one night. It was an evening tour, and it really got you to feel the grittiness of the history of that place. And our tour guide especially picked on the Americans in a good way, he, and not, not heckling us for being Americans, but he seemed to have like a special affinity for Americans. And, mm -hmm. Um, yeah, he was picking out the Americans as volunteers, and he seemed to really be welcoming this this energy that we brought. But um, yeah, and I everyone I met there. I mean, I got to know a group of about um, ten Swiss people, one of whom was an astronaut. Really, really interesting people, and they loved Americans. Every I didn't feel any kind of a an, antagonism. Really, it's summertime. There. Everybody in Europe is traveling. Yeah, you yeah. meet all kinds of people. And I think in this day and age, educated people understand that that whatever a president says or whatever an administration does isn't reflective of the whole population, sure, especially so. in our case. So. Yeah. Okay, so um, then you went to uh, Scandinavia. Yeah, and I went to Copenhagen. Uh, Copenhagen, a wonderful, a wonderful city. Um, yeah. And so uh, what was that like, uh, aside from well, Hamlet? <laughs> well, I, Hamlet was actually part of my later, later travels through Sweden. But um, Copenhagen... So I Elise uh, studied uh, English literature. At Princeton, so when I say Hamlet, it has a secondary meaning, yeah. <laughs> Very important. It's my favorite Shakespeare play, Call Me Trite, but it is. Um, that, was, that was overwhelming, but that's, that's part of the next segment. And actually, being going back into literature, my uh, highlight of, and maybe we can show the picture of um, Scotland before we skip Oh, yeah, let's go it. to the good picture. Okay, this is Scotland okay, that's now? that's Scotland. That is my Harry Potter tour. And Harry <laughs> Potter is rampant throughout Edinburgh. And you can see the child in the, is putting on the sorting hat. And my wonderful tour guide, I can't remember her name offhand, but she was such a great person. I actually tried to find her on Facebook. I failed to find her. <laughs> but um, really a wonderful person. And she had met J.K. Rowling a couple times and really just oh, no almost kidding. worshipped her. Good. I mean, this is J.K. Rowling's where she was inspired to write the books. I, was, I actually lived on Diagon Alley when I was in Edinburgh. So that... Um, 
that sorting hat was a fun activity. And we learned all sorts of things about the history of Harry Potter, how it was written, why it was written, who it was founded around and based upon. And there's a school. Have you, have you read Harry Potter, Jay? Uh, no. No? Oh, OK. Sorry, I'm too old for that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm guessing that enough of the viewers might have read Harry Potter, oh, though. Sure. So. Um, there was a, a school right outside the Greyfriars Churchyard, the main graveyard in Edinburgh, which is just a wonderful place to go. So it's unbelievably peaceful. You can see why that's where J.K. Rowling hung out while she was composing Harry Potter. And there's a school outside it called George Harriet School. And I want to see what house Jay falls into. Because in Harry Potter, there are four houses. Each one's represented by a different color, and each one has a different attitude. There's the sort of evil, self-indulgent house. There's the brave house. There's the intellectual house. And then there's the nice house. So um, Jay, would you pick a name of these four names that I'm going to give you? So the Name of a house? I'm going to give you four name words. I'm not going to tell you what the words okay, are. OK, all right. But um, Greyfriar, Castle, Loriston, and Rayburn. 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 Jay, you are a Gryffindor. <laughs> Jay doesn't know what that is because he doesn't read um, Harry Potter and never has. But that's Harry Potter's house. Oh, okay. So that's right. good. Everyone, okay, good, see, good the funny choice. thing is Harry Potter's house is called Gryffindor. And so everyone picks Greyfriar thinking that they're going to be in that. But instead, they're in Hufflepuff, which is a stupid, nice house. So you pick the brave house. Hufflepuff, that's going to be on the thing. <laughs> So, you know, I love the way the Scotch people talk, the Scottish people talk. It must be a joy to hear the music of the language there. <laughs> did, you, was, did you learn how to do it? No. So they roll their R's in an interesting way. One of the boyfriend of my host was uh, originally from China, but had lived in most of his life in Scotland. So he had this really crazy accent that was kind of an American accent, it sounded like to me. And I said, have you ever been in the U.S.? He had never been to the U.S. I said, how do you have an American accent? Because it didn't quite sound Scottish, but I guess the medley of Scottish and Chinese makes it sound somewhat American. I guess the Scots kind of cut their sound short. The Chinese draw them out long, so combined it sounds like an American accent. But he had this rolling of the R, and when he did that, that you, could tell, yeah, you could tell he wasn't an American by that rolling. So. You see the mermaid? That's in Copenhagen, so yeah. yeah. I have a picture of me with the mermaid, but since we were confined to 10 pictures, it got cut. Oh, too bad. I actually okay, saw good. the mermaid in a lightning storm. Uh, OK, so. OK. Want to see some more pictures here? Sure, yeah. So anyway, Jay got sorted into Gryffindor. That's my distant cousin in Copenhagen. Oh, so yeah, that's in Tivoli Gardens, which is where I spent two days well, while in Copenhagen. That's very beautiful there, isn't it? Yeah, yeah it was Tivoli the Gardens. inspiration for Walt Disney, and, or one of them. But yeah, that's Nikki. Nikki um, is, was the adopted cousin of Debbie, my stepmother. And uh, he was a wonderful person. Debbie's actually never even met Nikki. But um, we made the connection when I was in his hometown. So that's my Danish cousin right so there. So you were looking up connections while you were there, eh? Yeah, yeah. I, I always, and that's why most of the pictures in, that I've included here have people in them. I figure if I say a town, if I tell you what Tivoli Gardens is, anyone can Google Tivoli Gardens. Yeah. But when I add Nikki into Tivoli Gardens, then that yeah. makes it personal. People are good. So, yeah. And I had the impression, looking at your pictures, that you spent time with people as much as you could. You met people well, hither and yon, and you... <laughs> and you traveled with them and so forth? Well, I traveled by myself, but I, I think meeting the people was what made the trip valuable, you know, sure, and, sure. And, and that gave it a flavor, it gave each of the places a flavor to, to understand why people go there, what they think of the place. You know, I, I tend to travel in the springtime, so, um, well, for these European trips. So I'm there in June, July, May, idyllic times, and I don't get a sense necessarily of what a place is like being there in the idyllic times, because, you know, 75% of the time, it's not idyllic. It's somewhat miserable. So getting to know the people and what they actually think. Sure, that's the part that sticks with you. Do you write it down? The what? Do you write it down? Do I write down what? Your experiences. Yeah, I have a journal. I have oh, a journal. Okay. I mean, sometimes I get a little bit lazy about it, and it, you know, we'll go for a couple weeks without any entries. Yeah. You, you didn't happen to bring it with you today. No, I didn't. Okay. I didn't. Purposely. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it wouldn't have been really One great. more picture, and then we'll have a break. OK, next picture. Oh, that's um, Gothenburg. So that's my friend. Next to me is my friend Alessandro, who is my tennis buddy here in Hawaii, who now lives in Gothenburg. So he introduced me to all those other people in the pictures. The one in the red um, is an Italian student who just got her PhD in Gothenburg. So we were celebrating her departure. She's moving now to Australia. So and then there's a Canadian and a Italian and a Swede in the picture. 
So it's those were my new friends. Diversity. Yeah, we had just gone bowling right before that picture bowling, was taken. Bowling, of course. So, yeah. And that's in Sweden. Yeah, that's in Gothenburg, Sweden. Okay. We'll take a short break, and okay. I think we, we probably will come back to Sweden after this break. Okay. And we see some more pictures about Sweden, and then ultimately we will go on a safari. We'll be right <laughs> back here on Global Connections with, with Elise Anderson. <laughs> Aloha. My name is Wendy Lowe, and I want you to join me as we take our health back. On my show, all we do is talk about things in everyday life, in Hawaii or abroad. I have guests on board that will just talk about different aspects of health in every, in every way, whether it's medical health, nutritional health, diabetic health, you name it, we'll talk about it, even financial health. We'll even have some of the Miss Hawaii's on board and all the different topics that I feel will make your health and your lifestyle a lot better. So come join me. I welcome you to take your health back. Mahalo. <laughs> Aloha, I'm Winston Welch, host of Out and About. It's a show that we have every other Monday on Think Tech Live here. We explore a variety of topics that are really interesting. We explore organizations, events, and the people who fuel them in our city, state, country, and world. We've got some amazing guests on here, like all the shows at Think Tech. So if you want to catch up on stuff, Tune into my show every other Monday and other shows here on Think Tech Live. It's a great place to learn about stuff, to be informed, and uh, if you have some ideas, come on my show. Let's talk about it. See you later, and aloha. Elise Anderson. Footloose and fancy free all over the world. No kidding. Wow. At least footloose. And you, yeah, so you, you made plans to go, what, through um, the UK, through Edinburgh, and, and then um, Denmark and Sweden. But after that, you were footloose and fancy free, FIT? Well, I had a 10-day period where I left open. So I, I, booked, I booked Edinburgh, I booked Copenhagen, and uh, Gothenburg. Mm -hmm. And then I left about 10 days, and then I had to meet my family in Africa. Uh, my stepmother and father and her sons. Um, so, yeah, I, I had 10 days open. And I actually intentionally left them open until about 24 hours before they came up because I wanted to see what my mood was at the time. Ah, uh, mood, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's the way to travel. That's great I think so, yeah. That. I think there's a combination of, of being, you know, knowing what's going on and being firm in your plans because otherwise you just, you know, it's so, too stressful if you don't know what you're doing yeah, at all. You have to have a general but direction. Then, yeah, but to leave something open to, yeah. to work with and play adventure with. Adventure and all that. Yeah. So yeah. adventure meant going from Sweden to Lisbon, yeah. which you mentioned with is one of your favorite stops. cities, and it is one of my favorite cities, too. I <laughs> love Lisbon. I love the people. I love the architecture. I love the music. I love the parks. Music everywhere. Yeah. 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 It's, it's real in a way. And unfortunately, though, the prices in Lisbon are pricing locals out right now. Prices, rents have tripled since I was there in 2016. Wow. I mean, the same apartment that back then was $300, $300 a month, now is $1,000 a month. And it used to be dirt cheap. Now it's not, I mean, it's not like New York City now, but it's certainly not, it's like New York City for Portuguese who used to expect something it's else. It's been discovered. Yeah, That's what which happened, is sad you know. and very, very quickly. Yeah. So yeah. it's still authentic, but it's losing its edge, I think. It's, yeah. Yeah. So uh, well, did, did you see anything special in Lisbon? Um, I visited a bunch of friends. I met the people in Lisbon are just the best. I, I don't want to skip over everything before that, though, because I had a point to make about travel before Lisbon. But um, yeah, it was it was great. And I knew I'd like it. So I that was the that was the wild card that I threw in unplanned. Yeah, I was wow. still debating between Greece and Portugal. But um, Greece, I had never been to. I didn't know anyone there. And by the end of the trip, I'd been in new places and with strangers enough that I thought I want to go back to something familiar. Yeah, that's another element. If you know somebody there, that changes your affinity for the place. Yeah. Let's go back to pictures and we'll, okay. catch, we'll catch up. <clears throat> what do we got here? Okay, so there, that was a castle, a beautiful castle that's about to be open to a uh, visitor's, a hotel-ish kind of castle, but it's not a hotel yet. My friend Charlotta on the left, owns the castle, and then her friend Ellen, who I knew from Hawaii, um, whose brother still lives in Hawaii, Jonas, um, introduced me to Charlotta. And you can see our wonderful venison dinner right there. And there were peacocks walking around the pool. It was a gorgeous castle from the 12th century. And uh, yeah, so I stayed there for one night. We had a lightning storm. It was super exotic, really beautiful place. And um, then I spent the night on the Greyhound bus. 
So, I so castle to Greyhound exactly. bus. Exactly. So go. that for anyone who's going to Sweden, if you want to stay in a beautiful castle, it's called Ortofta Castle. I might be butchering the pronunciation, but that's her castle. Yeah, yeah, Charlotte's castle. Well, I feel like you know, judging from this conversation, I feel I ought to change my friends around. <laughs> I want all my friends to own castles. It, you know, it never hurts to have. You don't friends need around. them all to only a couple. <laughs> Just, okay. <laughs> but she's a lovely person, too, castle or no castle. All right. But, um, yeah, so I spent one night in the castle. It was beautiful. I was treated like royalty. And then I spent the next night on the Greyhound bus. And there was actually an immigrant. I was warned before I got on the Greyhound bus. I love the Greyhound bus, but someone who doesn't told me that illegal immigrants like to travel on the Greyhound <laughs> bus. So I was kind of aware of, you know, is this person an illegal immigrant for the first time that day that I traveled on the Greyhound bus. And there was a family of people that I suspect might have been. And there was a girl sleeping under my seat. So I went from under sleeping. Your seat. Yeah, I have a picture. I didn't okay. I didn't that's, put it that's up. The, that's the cheap seats. Very cheap. It was the floor. <laughs> it was actually kind of half under my seat, half under the seat of the guy in front of me. But um yeah, the there guy. was so that was the night I went from the castle to the Greyhound bus sleeping multi layered with you know, Where'd you children. go on the bus? Um, I went from Lund. The castle is near Lund. I went from there to very long, all through Germany and Denmark. Ended up in Strasbourg after that. So I went from in Lund Alsace. to Strasbourg, Alsace, yeah, France. And um, spent a couple days there and visited a friend in Switzerland and came back to Strasbourg. But um, yeah, it was a very, very long 24-hour bus ride. And I saw parts of Germany, including Frankfurt, which I don't recommend at all. It was ugly. Um, and depressing. You like but Strasbourg? I did. It was beautiful. I, I, you know what? There's only so much you can do with a place that's just a place. I didn't know anyone in Strasbourg aside from my host who was a delightful person and who gave me a bunch of um, melatonin pills, which I'm still using, so thank you to him. <laughs> that <laughs> helps you sleep. Yeah, but I didn't, I mean, there was no human element in Strasbourg for me, and it was pretty, you know, I walked through the, the gardens, the Tuliers Strasbourg gardens, except um, you it's know, a big church just, there too. Isn't yeah, it? yeah, that was beautiful. That was, yeah. I mean, it was second, I'd say, to um, the church in Barcelona. So um, the Sagrada Familia is the only church I've seen that impressed me more than the one in How'd Strasbourg. How'd you get from Strasbourg to Lisbon? I flew. So I took <laughs> a, a <laughs> overnight no buses, bus. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a little far. So I took an overnight bu bus from Strasbourg to Charles de Gaulle in Paris and then flew from Charles de Gaulle to Lisbon. Yeah. So, and actually, the Greyhound bus, I mean, not the Greyhound bus, the Flix bus is um, much, much more comfortable than an airplane. So anyone who turns up their nose at the Flix bus doesn't know what they're talking about. How do you spell that? F-L-I-X-B-U-S, and it, it's bright green, so you always can recognize it from far away. It has an app. You can cancel up to like an hour before the bus takes off. So I'm sorry if I've been saying Greyhound bus. I do take the Greyhound when I'm in the U.S., but in uh, Europe, the Flix bus. So. Okay. Now, after Lisbon and all that, I mean, I, uh, I, I love Lisbon, too. Here, let's quickly look at the pictures. Oh, let's see from, some more pictures. Let's keep like, the pictures up. So that's my friend Ilaria and her two this friends. This is in this Lisbon? Is in Lisbon, outside Lisbon. That's in um, mm -hmm. Ericeira, Portugal. So the wild, angry ocean, as she said. She's a surfer. So the next picture. Those are some new friends of mine, two of them from Russia, one of them from Morocco. The, the fellows from Morocco, the two are, women are from Talk Russia. Talk about diversity, and, my goodness gracious. <laughs> yeah, and look at the, the tiles, too. They're called Azulejos, and that Miradoro, the lookout point, and the garden around it was just stunning. That's, it this smelled like tons herbs. tons of tiles, doesn't it? Yeah, it's That's just... That's specialty. It really is. They even have a museum for tiles. Yeah. So that was my favorite place and to hang Arabic out. they're tiles. They're from North Africa. Yeah, yeah. yeah has a lot of that Moorish connection. But um, those Russian girls were just so outgoing. I actually only knew them for about 20 minutes before that picture was taken. And we just got along. The one in the middle is now my Facebook, Instagram buddy. And, you know, that's the beauty of travels. You just meet people, simpatico people, even if they don't speak your language or you don't speak their language very well, and you keep in touch. That's the beauty of it. Is that more the case in Europe than it is in the U.S.? Absolutely. Although I think it's also the case for travelers. I think I'm more open-minded. when It's not about the U.S. as it's about me and my mindset when I'm somewhere else. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. But, I won't but blame the U.S. especially in Europe where people have that mindset. Yeah. Lots yeah. of people have that same mindset you're talking about. For yeah. sure, because the countries are small. Yeah, yeah, and it's a self-selected group of people who are, who are yeah. traveling in the first place. So. Hope you stay in touch with them. Yeah, well, so far we're, so we're in far. touch, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and then there was another group of Latvians. I would have included that picture, too. Uh, I didn't show the Miradoro, though. So, But they were a delightful Latvian couple that I also met there, and we had dinner together the next night. Lovely. What and, kind of food? Um, Portuguese food. 
It's all good. Wine. It's all Lots good. Of wine. It's all good. <laughs> Madero's. Um, Madero. I, Madera. Madera, yeah. Okay, what else? What, what's your next picture there? Next picture? Oh, that's my friend Ricardo and Alex and a bunch of other people that I met. Ricardo and I lived together in San Francisco about six years ago. So he was my roommate there and got to know uh, his friends. And he gave me wonderful tours around Lisbon. And um, we were, and if you flip to the next picture. Speak English or Portuguese? Oh, they all speak English. Okay. They all, I don't speak any Portuguese. So that is what a typical Lisbon street looks like. That's not an event. That's just every single day in June, basically, the streets look like that. And there's music, there's a concert. Um, there are you know, always those colorful banners hanging through the streets. I mean, that, look at that sea of humanity. That's Lisbon for you. So that's where we went with that group that you just saw after dinner. And they're and friendly. Yeah, yeah, very friendly. It's like very Hawaii welcoming. in many ways, don't you think? I mean, it's socially. like Hawaii, yeah, but with fewer restrictions and much older, much more history than Hawaii. Yeah, sure, of course. And it's it's also a much smaller country. It, there's, it, it's more of a homogenous group of people, I think, who have more of a sense of identity than Hawaii. Hawaii has a lot of pockets, and you know, for better or worse, it's a melting pot, as they say. Well, or we tries saw to be. we saw a lot of uh, Africans in uh, Lisbon. Mm, we yeah. saw a, a lot of Chinese in Lisbon. They were opening businesses left and right. Hmm. It, it was uh, very dynamic. We were there like three years ago. Oh, wow. Yeah, so, that was right after I was there last time. So uh, let's go to Africa now. Okay. How'd you get from Lisbon to uh, East <laughs> well, I Africa? Flew. I guess the safari was East Africa. East, yeah, Central East in Tanzania. So yeah, yeah I had a one-week safari with my dad's stepmother, uh, two stepbrothers who are twins, and one of them had just gotten engaged a few days earlier, so his fiance. Was it high luxury? Yeah, it was high luxury. Yeah. It was. We had um, these immense tents, and I mean, it was just very, very plush. Each of our, my, I had a big cabin to myself, which was maybe two or three of these studios put together just for me. And it wow. had running water, flush toilets, warm wow. showers. The one thing was I got very, very sick the last day. So anyone traveling to Africa, beware of the anti-malaria pills. They can make you very sick. Is that and what happened? Maybe. Food poisoning could have been an issue, too. There were some sanitary conditions at the last camp. My yeah. dad, who's a health official, um, saw that the sewage tanks were open, so the flies could fly into the sewage, then fly to the kitchen, and that's possibly how we got sick. I got sick, and then the fiancé of my stepbrother also got oh, sick the oh, same oh, day. Both there, And it was oh. the day that we had to fly on a little airplane across, um, <laughs> across Africa. So it, this <laughs> well, is across a photographic Tanzania. safari, then took pictures? Yeah, yeah, many pictures. So maybe we can see. Just one let's of the we gotta clean up, uh, close up. So let's yep. look. So at there's it. one picture. I was only allowed ten pictures. I would have added more, but um, that was one picture of cheetahs. So cheetahs. Were, yeah, okay. I took pictures of lions, of wildebeests, of all sorts of things. I mean, zebras. Yeah. It was just really the circle of life. I even had a picture of a a vulture a horde of vultures devouring a dead wildebeest, and you could really see all the details. You weren't at risk or anything. Of what? Oh, of, of an being animal? attacked by an animal. Well, there were animals prowling right outside my tent at night, so I could have been at yeah. risk if I had stepped out of the tent. Yeah. The, the warriors come to get you with a bow and arrow. <laughs> kind of intense. <laughs> How long were you in Africa on this uh, safari? One week. Oh, okay, yeah, that one sounds just Africa. right. Yeah, Good it was it was right. Week. I was ready to leave. I was ready to get back to the first world after that for yeah. sure, especially because I had just been deathly sick the day before. That, that sets you apart. So, yeah. <laughs> so okay, then you came back by way of the Middle East, but you didn't stop there. I did. I had a I had a fifty minute connection that I missed. So you can see my katarat is what this water bottle is from. I got it from my hotel that they had to put me up in Doha for a day. That water bottle is from Ka yep, Qatar. This is yeah. from Qatar. Yep, yeah. from Doha, Qatar, Katarat. Okay, well, hold on to it. Maybe you should refill it. <laughs> I have many times. This is not water from it's, Qatar. It's one of those uh, souvenir things. <laughs> exactly. But yeah, so I spent a day in Doha, which was so peaceful. I loved it, actually. I'm kind of really glad that I missed my connection. And, um, you know, the children were just so well behaved in that airport. Everything worked perfectly. They actually let me take a full bottle of water through the security <laughs> checkpoint. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, half the people seemed to be covered in robes. And, you know, it was just everyone was... Harmonious, and we talk about you know certain religions disparagingly, but they're very very functional in yeah. what I've witnessed. Yeah, and that's an affluent place too. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So we stopped in Paris for four days after that. I went to Disneyland Paris, the Eiffel Tower, the Louvre, all that junk. Yeah. But yeah. Um, what a trip! Okay, so we we only have time for one more short question, and that okay. is this: <clears throat> How did this change you? How did 
what, what, what was the profound, prof, profound lesson mm. uh, that you learned on this trip? Mm, hard <laughs> question. Oh, there are so many. I think one, one thing is about niche. And I, I've been watching shows with animals. But, you know, every show about Africa is about a person who falls in love with an animal and then finds that they can't live with the animal because the animal belongs in a different world. And that's what I took out of Africa, was that this is a gorgeous place, but it's not a place that I should be. You know, and that, and that we all have our own niches. And even within the human civilization, there are certain places that I love but that I don't belong. And this Hawaii is where I belong. So that's what I probably would have gathered from it. Oh, Lise, that's, that's really profound, actually. <laughs> Lisa Anderson, world traveler here on Global Connect. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you, yeah, Jay. Nice to see you back. <laughs> <laughs> nice to be back.